My name's Casey Sosnowski, and uh, this is my co-host. I'm Gianni DeMaia. And uh, I decided I wanted to do a podcast with a friend about the Animorphs books. And I know a lot of, uh, there are a lot of podcasts about them out there already, but I kind of wanted to take it in a different turn. So um, Gianni, why don't you tell the people uh, your background? Yeah, so uh, I'm a film major. I, I mean, I specialized in film acting, but I think in later years, I kind of moved more to just film in general. Um, I did a lot of stuff in college uh, for writing for film, directing films, um, and then my big claim to fame, um, <laughs> my, my my f list claim to fame was that I was <laughs> uh, the host of the Bad Movies podcast for quite some time, where we did some film criticism, which is actually how Casey and I met. So uh, mm-hmm. we definitely wanted to talk about the Animorphs books. Um, but also from a lens of maybe adapting them because the adaptation of the Animorphs is something. Lackluster, maybe? <laughs> that, that's a word. Lackluster yeah. might be the, the best term for it. Um, so, yeah, I also have a, a background in film. Um, I went to school for acting in film, and we also learned about the different positions behind the camera as well as in front of the camera. Um, And I've always been a big fan of just movies in general, uh, which is why I wanted to be on Gianni's podcast. Um, And we met up and we talked about films and we like talking about films and looking at it with a more critical eye of like the themes, what works, what doesn't work. And I wanted to bring that same energy to the Animorphs books because I'm not sure if it's been done like that before in terms of a podcast. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to come back to these books. I never finished reading them as a kid. Gianni, have you ever read any of them? I have read exactly zero Animorphs books. Actually, that's not true. As of recording this podcast, I have read the first Animorphs book. So we will yes. get to that in our actual first episode. But yeah, Absolutely. I am a complete Animorph um, novice. Um, were they ever on your radar as a kid? Yes, big time. My brother was a huge fan. Um, I don't think he read all of them, but he definitely read most of them. And whatever I saw of the TV show was peripherally from him when he he would watch it when it was on. So that's my experience. I kind of loosely understand Animorphs. Yeah, what I understand about the TV show, it aired on Nickelodeon um, at the height of the books. The books were super, super popular. I remember them being everywhere. And I was kind of obsessed with them because I love animals. And that was always like my one request to be like, what's your superhero power if you could only choose one? I was like, I want a little like amulet like, that like allows me to turn into an animal, whatever animal I want. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm a nerd. And, uh, <laughs> but, but that also gives you like, all the powers of like flying and like invisibility. You know what I mean? Like Wait, which, there's animals that what like a lizard, like invisible. You could like be a like a flea like a... on somebody's body and get oh, on a plane. Oh, yeah. that's a that's a great point. Yeah, you, you yeah. You could so touch a flea be... and then become a flea in the animal series. Great Hell idea. yeah! <laughs> <laughs> then, then then the world's your really your oyster. You know? Absolutely. So um, you know you can do a bunch of different stuff with different animals. Um, so I never really got into the TV series that much just because I'm not sure if it was on at the wrong time. I did a lot of after school activities, so I didn't really get to tune into the the series. I think at some point I watched like one or two episodes on TV when it aired and I wasn't really impressed, um, (laughs) as (laughs) Not to be rude. I mean, I'm sure all of the actors worked really hard on it. Everybody, like the the cast and crew, all, you know, they put their heart and souls into everything. Um, Of course. But I think it was very low budget. And I think Mm. they kind of deviated away from the books in certain ways. Um, Especially since from the books, the kids are all like 12. (laughs) Right. And in the show, they were at least early 20s, probably. <laughs> yeah, they, were, they went to the uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man school of, of high school students, right? So, exactly. Or, or middle school, I guess, wherever you're really placing it. Exactly. Um, he could fit anywhere. He's, he's Tobey yeah. Maguire. <laughs> yeah. Who cares? He's 30. Uh, he's 17. Yeah, yeah he could be 17. It's fine. <laughs> um, 
So I wanted to kind of, I've always tried to pick up these books again and read the whole series. I've never finished the whole series. I've gotten to like, maybe like the middle 40s. And mm. then I just, I, I don't know what happened, Gianni. I fell off the wagon. I'm a horrible wow. person. I well, just we got yeah, no. to put you back on the wagon. I mean, the I gotta wagon's get right back there. To... You know, it's, it's just rolling away without you. You got to hop back on that puffer and, <laughs> and then ride it off into the sunset. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it'll be great. It'll be great. Um, I There's what, 54 books in the series? Is I think right? so, yeah. Okay. Uh, something and like then, that. And then... I, and I don't know if you can answer this question or I'll if do you're my just going to edit this part out entirely, <laughs> which is totally fine with me. But, uh-huh. okay, in my very limited research, which mm-hmm. is Wikipedia, yes. uh, there's also the Megamorphs. Is yes. that like a spinoff so or something? So that – yes. Um, so that is also in the list of the books that we have. It's They're listed in there chronologically um, where it fits in the series. Um, yes, it's like an offshoot. Megamorphs, I'm not entirely certain what um, Megamorphs exactly is, if it's just like a one-off story that is just like an extra book for the fans, um, mm-hmm. or if they actually play into the plot going forward. I never really read the Megamorphs books, mm-hmm. um, so I'm not 100% certain. I know there's also the hork Bajir Chronicles and the Andalite <laughs> Chronicles. Yeah. Um, yeah, that sounds right, which are, based on my Wikipedia <laughs> look-through right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you nailed um, it. So I never really deviated from the original series as a kid, because I was like, these books only! Um, and I didn't mm. want to be distracted from finishing the series, which that happened oh, anyway. A real so. anamorph purist I that am, you are over there. Excuse me. Yeah. Realize yeah, yeah. who you you're said speaking to. said if it's not 12-year-olds <laughs> turning into dinosaurs, then I don't want it. <laughs> exactly wait do they turn into dinosaurs i I feel like they should that's a natural progression gianni i don't want to ruin anything for you because you're going into this completely blind you have no idea what you're you're in for you're right you're right no spoilers i'm just putting my wishes out there i you know what i think that's something we can incorporate into these episodes what are your wishes for the next books going forward so we'll be sure to do that in our first like official episode um, I got lists, lists of wishes. <laughs> we have 54 books, so they better we, they better cover them all. We got some reading to do. Um, so I, I mean, figured yeah. I would never finish the series on my own unless I had a friend that I forced to read them uh, with me. And uh, then mm-hmm. I said, Gianni, you're bored, right? You don't have any friends, right? You want to read some yeah. uh, uh, preteen books from the 90s? Yeah, and, the, uh, and I said, of course, all of those things are true about me at all times, <laughs> and yes, of course I will. No, I'm also, I'm an avid book club enthusiast, so if there's one thing I know, it's it's bullying people into reading books that they don't want to read, so this is, I mean, we happen to want to read this mm-hmm. right now, I'm sure once we get into whatever slog there is, because every series has a slog somewhere in there, yes. so whenever we get into that, that is going to be, it's going to be work, but it's going to be great. I think it's going to be obvious, um, with uh, K.A. Apple, Applegate, the author, she, she essentially made this series because she wanted to make money. Which, more props to her, like, first off, like, yeah, some hey. of these books, like, a lot of these books are really, really good for the themes they present and for the things that happen in them are actually a lot more adult than like what mm. I was expecting when I returned to these as an adult. Um, and mm. I was a little bit shocked <laughs> and I was just like, wow, this is heavy <laughs> stuff. Um, um, and just the fact that she just did it because she wanted to make money. I was really impressed at the amount of sincerity and dramatic stuff that she put in not just for the sake of being Mm. dramatic but like to tell a good story and to give everybody completely different character arcs um so i think that that's really interesting because i'm i'm not sure if you see as much of that in books that are geared to preteens they don't quite deal Mm. with as heavy topics as uh murdering people and kids who are abandoned and you know like that i feel like Maybe I'm out of the loop. <laughs> I haven't read any real like preteen <laughs> books in a while. So, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I feel like these books kind of hold a little special place in my heart for something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 my experience with like YA is very limited. 
um, you know, uh, barring of course, like some particular touchstone pieces that I've like Twilight. come back to. Um, <laughs> I watched all of the Twilight movies. I don't think that I'm counts sorry. Though, as, a, as a reader. <laughs> Um, but, but, you know, I, I mean, Wrinkle in Time series, I would come back mm. to, um, Chronicles of Narnia, things of that nature. Uh, but mm. yeah, I would say even just in the first book of Animorphs, it was already pretty, it was much more intense than I, I anticipated. So, uh, props to, uh, Miss Applegate for getting her bread. Um, mm -hmm. but we, we will, uh, we will piggyback off her success in every yeah. way that we can. And that'll be great. Oh yeah, I I meant I just realized that I I've meant to uh, <laughs> complete that thought. Um, so it is a lot of books. She did get ghost writers for some of the books, um, and I think some of them are a little obvious, as far <laughs> as I've heard from like Reddit and like oh, other I'm people so, reading so the series. Yeah. Um, so we can kind of guess and uh, see what we can find if it's painfully obvious or not. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to give out this little preview episode for people who are interested in checking this out, or if nobody listens, I mean, that's okay. Gianni and I can just strengthen our friendship. Yeah, so, we have you know. no qualms in, uh, in, in, you know, just talking at nothing, you know, that's And virtually fine. hanging out. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's kind of our MO. If, if anyone <laughs> listens, it's really just a bonus. This is for us. Yeah. So, no <laughs> other you friends find allowed. yourself... Yeah, if you find yourself wanting to hear about two people reading the Animorph series, one of them for the very first time, then please join us. Uh, we're we're going to have a blast doing it. Absolutely. Um, is there uh, anything you would like to plug at the end of this, Gianni, or should we uh, just leave them where they are? I think just leave them wanting more, you know? Just, That's the, right. just The only plug is to come back and see what other Animorphs books we read, you know what I mean? Yeah, we'll be the Morphin Buddies. Morphin Buddies. I feel like you have to say you have to say it with like a cool like you know like you're oh really Morphin Buddies. Or something, should... You know what I mean? Like every every time every time I read it, like because I, I you know you just type it to uh -huh. me. You're like with well, Morphin Buddies, and I'm like I'm always like oh, yeah, cool cool Morphin okay. Buddy. <laughs> and I'm like God, I'm such a fucking nerd. <laughs> okay. You know what? I will give you this opportunity to compose yourself and make it sound really cool. You ready? Yeah yeah okay okay yeah three yeah. two one do it. Morphin buddies. Morphin buddies. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. sounded pretty cool. All I, right. I think I think the people felt that one. Yeah. I think they did. I felt a shiver through my spine a little bit. Yeah. So I got half <laughs> goosebumps, the... so I think that's something. <laughs> yeah, I, that could also just be the the embarrassment of listening back to this when you're sixty years old. <laughs> I can't wait to cringe. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, all right, everyone. So we hope you join us on this journey and you stick around. I will be setting up some kind of email address for people to contact us. I'm not sure about like Instagram just because what am I going to post? Just pictures of the covers of the, of the books, which they're oh, cool yeah. to look I mean, at. I'm social media illiterate. So, uh, you know, TBD on, on any stuff like that. But, but yeah, yeah, you can definitely email us uh, yeah. at, at an email account that will be that Once I get that set up, eventually. everyone will know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it's hard to do. I'm just lazy. Um, that's the plug. So. That's the plug. Is <laughs> the, the whatever plug. we're going to do next. <laughs> that's the plug. <laughs> exactly. So to end this out, Gianni, if you were an Animorph, mm. what kind of animal would you want to morph into the most? And why? I would have to do like a sloth or something something that <laughs> sleeps a lot that's really unimposing that has Just something that people are people are gonna like actually not a sloth you know because i need something that people are gonna leave alone you know just something that's gonna sleep mm -hmm. and then like everyone, everyone's gonna be like oh just let him rest you know what I mean? mm -hmm. maybe like a bear or something like that do you want um a couple sloth facts yeah of course. Okay. That they pee at the base of trees or something. Yes, and they do. That's pretty much all I know about. Stuff. Yes, to use the bathroom, they go down a tree, and they have to like be on the ground where they're most vulnerable to predators. But their backs are also covered in bacteria. Gross. <laughs> Gross. Oh, so maybe maybe they should maybe they should be left alone. Then. <laughs> For a second, when you said sloth, I thought you were gonna say slug, and I was gonna be like, Gianni, what? <laughs> 
I, t- I take it all back. I want to be a slug because that—that that is something you would leave alone. But that is something that I think most people would be like, "Oh God, yeah, just get it away from me." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. One hundred percent. Yeah. What about um, you? What's your what's your anamorph of choice? I've always said if I were any animal, I would be a peregrine falcon because they that is dive. So specific. <laughs> Yeah, because they dive at the ground at like 200 miles an hour almost. Yeah, yeah. And they're amazing. True. They're beautiful. They're blue. They're like yeah. blue, white, black, and orange. Like that's so cool. So I'd always – I'd be one of those or I would be a possum. The, I mean wildly different experiences from those two <laughs> animals. But yeah, I, great choices. I like, I like that anytime possums are scared, they just open their mouths so wide and they just stare at you like that's going to do something when actually – Possums are super gentle, and uh, they won't. They likely, like ninety nine percent of the time, will not bite you, even if you put your hand in their mouth because they're yeah. scared and they freeze and try to look this, intimidating. This whole mm-hmm. podcast is actually just possum propaganda. It's trying to get, <laughs> trying to trying to overhaul the human experience to appreciate possums more. They're now, so good. The, they eat ticks. They don't get rabies. They're, they're immune to rabies. They're little, they're little freaky dudes, dude. Yeah. I, they're they're, they're little nasty freaky little boys, trash dude. bears. I love them yeah. so much. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love how the gross par- they are. <laughs> One quick comment on the peregrine, just because I'm thinking yes. about it, and you can edit yes. this out too. But the, yeah. the, uh, Werner Herzog, uh, always said that the there's this book called the peregrine that's like about peregrines and he was like it is the best but bu- i'm not gonna do his accent no i am gonna do it Please. it is it is the best book <laughs> <laughs> uh, because uh, he, it always, is the best book. <laughs> <laughs> he always thought that it was like a book i guess that kind of crafted the lens of how a director should experience filmmaking Interesting. Okay. In his mind, it was like the role of the director. So anyway, I brought it. It's just a book about peregrines. (laughs) So if you're curious, (laughs) so I mean, if you're curious about it, I mean, I think there's there's maybe some insight if you have the Herzogian lens when you read it. But I I can't say I can't say you're gonna get anything other than what is exactly advertised, which is it is a book about (laughs) peregrines. So just be next podcast. Just to get next podcast. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be the next one. We'll just dive into That's peregrines. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's we'll just throw it somewhere in the midst of all of the animorph books. We'll do it at like we'll we'll do it right at the climax. We'll do it like yeah. book fifty. Yeah, and, and then we'll we like, won't do now... the last book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll just talk about the peregrine. We're like, this was a real departure for Applegate to talk yeah, about really just peregrines. Really strange. For a she while. just talked about birds the whole time. Wild. <laughs> Anyway, that's how it ends. Kind of disappointing, but, you know. Yeah. But, but there was this German guy who just wouldn't get out of my room. He just kept talking. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, we'll, I mean, I guess we'll just wrap this up really quickly. But um, we hope everyone listening and maybe the, the no people that are listening um, <laughs> tune in and listen and enjoy our podcast and offer us some constructive criticism Thoughts and feelings. Once we get that email set up, I will let everyone know ASAP. Um, but welcome to Morphin Buddies. Morphin Buddies.